Welcome to the Ultimate Sports Podcast. Today is Friday, May 3rd, 2019. Today I'm going to recap yesterday's NBA and Stanley Cup playoff games. Look ahead to tonight's playoff games and this weekend's playoff games. I'm going to go over yesterday's baseball games and look ahead to today's baseball games. And I'm going to do my best bet of the day. First, we'll start with the NBA and go over last night's games and look ahead to tonight and to this weekend. Only one game on last night. The Sixers absolutely destroyed the Raptors. 116-95. Philly takes a 2-1 series lead. Joel Embiid was by far the best player on the court. 33 points, 10 rebounds, 6 blocks, 3 assists. This guy was amazing. And he had Mark Jackson and Jeff Van Gundy arguing about whether he's going to be one of the best big men of all time or not. Tobias Harris had 13. Simmons had 10, 7, and 7. Jimmy Butler had 22, 9, and 9. JJ Redick had 15. Off the bench, James Ennis had 10. Meanwhile, on the other side, Kawhi Leonard had 33 very quietly. Pascal Siakam had 20. Danny Green had 13. Bench didn't do anything that was a problem for Toronto. Only two games on the night. You have the Bucks and the Celtics, 8 o'clock ESPN. Mark Jones and Hubie Brown on the call. It's a 1-1 series. Boston's a two-point favorite. I'm going to say the Celtics win tonight. I think that crowd's going to be really into it. The role players usually play better at home. This is a spot where I could see the Bucks role guys struggling and that crowd at TD Garden really getting into it. They have the Celtics going on, and then obviously the Bruins have their big game tomorrow night, which we'll get to. And the city of Boston, I think, is fired up for these two teams. And I think the Celtics go out there and put on a big performance from their home faithful. 116-108. And I think that there's a chance that it's a blowout. 10.30 ESPN, the Nuggets and the Trailblazers. Portland's a four-point favorite. Dave Pash and Doris Burke on the call. This should be a fun game between these two. Obviously, Portland went into Denver and won game two. I think Portland wins the series, so I have to pick them to win game three, right? And I am. So, give me Portland. Damian Lillard will be the best player on the court. Let's go with 120-110. to 110. Blazers win. Saturday, you have one game. Saturday, 8.30 ABC. Rockets Warriors, game three. Golden State has a 2 nothing series lead. Houston's favorite by three and a half in the game. Mike Breen, Jeff Van Gundy. And Mark Jackson on the call. Lisa Salter's doing the sideline because Doris is obviously calling the game with Dave Pash. The Rockets are under the most pressure of any team this weekend. And I think that they'll get it done tomorrow night in front of their home fans and at least make it a little interesting. So give me the Rockets. I think that they win and I think they cover. I think James Harden will come up big. I think Chris Paul will come up big. Clint Capella played a little better. I think the roll guys will play better at home. Give me the Rockets 117 to 109. And Sunday, 3:30 ABC. 76ers host the Raptors. Game four. Philly has the 2-1 series lead. Mark Jones and Hubie Brown will be on the call of this one. Toronto is a point and a half favorite. Toronto was also favored in. Yesterday's game, but Philly ended up winning. Did yesterday make me change my mind about the series? No. I still think the Raptors are really good. And I think that they're going to rebound from yesterday. Kyle Lowry will play better. I think that their bench guys will be better. So give me Toronto in a close one on the road. Like maybe 107 to 103. Low scoring defense. And I think that Toronto will get the big win to tie up that series at two apiece. And 
7 o'clock on TNT, Sunday night, the Nuggets and the Trailblazers, Game 4. I think Portland's going up 3-1. They're the better team. They don't normally lose at home. They're unbeaten in the playoffs at home. Those fans are going to be fired up in Portland. So give me Portland to go up 3-1 there. Next up, the NHL. I am going to recap last night's game to go over this weekend slate. Bruins over the Blue Jackets 4-1. Boston ties up the series at two apiece. The first goal of the game is scored by David Pasternak, 1-0 Bruins. Patrice Bergeron's fourth of the playoffs on the power play, 2-0 Bruins. Artemi Panarin's fifth of the playoffs makes it a 2-1 game. No more scoring until the third period. Sean Corley, second of the playoffs, 3-1 Bruins. Then Patrice Bergeron's fifth of the postseason, second of the game on the power play. 4-1 Bruins is your final. Number one started the game with 39 saves on 40 shots. Took a rest. Number two started the game with two goals. Patrice Bergeron. Number three started the game with a goal and assist. David Pasternak. Avalanche over the Sharks 3-0. That's a 2-2 series now. A big win for the Colorado Avalanche. No goals in the first. Second period, Nathan McKinnon, sixth of the postseason. 1-0 Avs. Third period, Colin Wilson, fourth of the postseason on the power play. 2-0 Avs. And then Eric Johnson, second of the playoffs into the empty net. 3 nothing. Abs is your final. Huge win. Philip Gorbauer, number one, started the game with 32 saves on 32 shots. Nathan McKinnon's number two, started the game with a goal. And number three, started the game was Miko Rottenen with his two assists. Two games on tonight. 7 o'clock, NBCSN, the Islanders and the Hurricanes. Carolina's up 3-0. I think they close out tonight. And I think that the Islanders look like a team that's finished, and Carolina just has something magical to them right now. That crowd's going to be fired up. They're 4-0 and at home in the postseason, make it 5-0. and 9.30, NBCSN, the Stars and the Blues. St. Louis is the home team here, and they're favored on the call this game. Kenny Albert. Kendall, Quinn, Schofield, and Pierre McGuire. And by the way, on the first game on Islanders Hurricanes, you'll have John Forslund, A.J. Malesko, and Brian Boucher. I'm going to say the home team wins the second game of the doubleheader tonight, too. I just think the Blues are the better team. I picked them in six. I'm going to stick to that prediction. Not suggesting the series is over. I won't be surprised if Dallas wins the series, but... I just think the Blues are the better team, led by Vladimir Tarasenko, Alex Steen, Ryan O'Reilly, and all those guys. Jordan Binghamton, I think, has been the better goalie in the series. Although Bishop was the better goalie the other night. So, give me the Blues, and I think they will be a 4-3 overtime win for the St. Louis Blues. And in terms of an Islanders Hurricane score, I'll give you 4-2 Canes with the last goal being an empty net. I think the Islanders are somewhat competitive on tonight's game. Tomorrow night, right after the Kentucky Derby on NBC, you have the Blue Jackets and the Bruins at 7.15. Doc Emmerich, Mike Mulberry, and Brian Boucher on the call. I think that the Bruins gained a lot of momentum from their win against the Blue Jackets. And that said, this these playoffs have been so unpredictable that I won't be surprised if Columbus is ultimately the team that wins the series. Give me the Bruins at home. I mentioned how I think Boston is rallying around this team in the Celtics. And I think that Tuka Rask has found himself a little bit. I think Sergei Bobrovsky is going to do everything he can to keep Columbus in this game. But ultimately, the better team is the Boston Bruins. So give me the Bruins there. Avalanche Sharks, 10 o'clock NBCSN. Chris Cuthbert, Joe McLeod, and Pierre McGuire on the call. I think that back in the Shark Tank, where the Sharks normally play well, I think they'll get the win here. they go up 3-2 in the series. So give me San Jose there. In terms of a score, let's go 4-3 Bruins in regulation and then 5-4 San Jose in overtime in the second game on Saturday night. And then for Cinco de Mayo, 3 o'clock NBC, you have the Blues and the Stars from Dallas. A decisive game six. No matter what, it could be a closeout game for somebody. It'll be Kenny Albert, 
Pierre Maguire, Kendall Coyne, Schofield on the call, unless they make changes, unless they put Joe McGlady on the series and Coyne Schofield doesn't do it. I don't know, but Kenny Albert and Pierre Maguire are sure things, I think. But the analysts could be different. I still think it's going to be Coyne Schofield, although I wouldn't rule out Joe McGlady doing two series. I'm going to say that the Blues close out on Sunday. Like I said, I think the Blues win this in six. That was my prediction. I'm going to stick to it. And then, if necessary, Hurricanes Islanders, 7 o'clock on NBCSN. I don't think that will be the case because I think Carolina closes out tonight. Now we'll move on to baseball. We'll go over yesterday's small slate and look ahead to today's bigger slate. Mets over the Reds, one nothing. Big win for the Mets. They're 16-15. Cincinnati's 13 and 18. Noah Syndergaard's the win. He's 2 and 3. Tyler Maley the loss 0 and 4. The lone run of the game came in the bottom of the third inning on a solo shot by Noah Syndergaard. So he single handedly won this game for the New York Mets. And here's his stat line on the mound: nine innings, four hits, no earned runs, a walk, and ten strikeouts. The ZRA goes down to 5.02. And I really think that. Syndergaard has turned the corner here. We'll just see how he follows it up. Tyler Maley, five innings, four hits, an earned run, no walks, seven strikeouts, ERA, 4.09. Padres over the Braves, 11-2. The, the Padres are 18-14. and 14. Atlanta's 15-16. and 16. Matt Strom gets the win. He's 1-2. Mike Faltianich, the loss, 0-1. Top of the third, home run Ian Kinsler, 1 0 pods. Top of the fifth, RBI double Ian Kinsler, 2 0 pods. Fielder's choice, Manny Machado, 3 0 pods. Sacrifice fly error, Cosmer, 4 0 pods. RBI single, Will Myers, 5 0 pods. Infield single, Miguel Margot, 6 0 pods. Top of the sixth, RBI double Manny Machado, 7 0 pods. RBI single error, Cosmer, 8 0 pods. RBI triple by Ty France gives the Padres a 9-0 lead. Two-run home run, Will Myers 11-0 pods, and a bomb the six with two-run single by Nick Markakis for two garbage runs for the Braves to make it 11-2. Matt Strom, six innings, eight hits, two home runs, no walks, six strikeouts, zero three point zero three. The Braves actually went with an opener in Charlie Culberson, which was really interesting. One inning, one hit, two walks, and a strikeout. And then Faltianich came in for four and two thirds, eight hits, two home runs, no walks, three strikeouts, zero five point zero six. Twins over the Astros, eight to two. A good statement win by the Minnesota Twins. They are nineteen and ten. Houston's eighteen and fourteen. Jose Barrios gets the win. He's five and one. Brad Peacock the loss, two and two. Top of the first home run, Alex Bregman one nothing Astros. Bottom of the third home run, Jason Castro one one. Bottom of the fourth, here come the Twins. RBI single, Jonathan Scope two one. Two run double, Jason Castro four one. RBI triple, Byron Buxton five one. Sacrifice by Max Kepler six one. RBI double, Nelson Cruz seven one. Fielder's Choice, Jason Castro, 8-1. That was in the bottom of the fifth. Top of the seventh, sacrifice fly, Tony Kemp, made it 8-2, and that was your final. Jose Barrio, seven innings, seven hits, two earned runs, no walks, five strikeouts, ERA, 2.91. Brad Peacock, three and two-thirds innings, eight hits, seven earned runs, two walks, two strikeouts, ERA, 5.28. Rockies over the Brewers, 11-6. So the Rockies got a win in Milwaukee. They're 15 and 17. Milwaukee 17 and 16. John Gray gets the win. He's 3 and 3. Freddie Peralta the loss 1 and 1. Top of the first three run double. Mark Reynolds 3 0 Rockies. Infield single by Raymel Tapia to put him up 4 0. Top of the second RBI double. David Dahl 5 0. Two run shot. Nolan Arenado 7 0. Bottom of the third RBI double. Lorenzo Kane 7 1. Two run single, Mike Vistaka, 7 3. Top of the fourth, home run, David Dahl, 9 3. 
Bottom of the fourth, home run Ryan Braun, 9-4. Top of the fifth, RBI double Charlie Blackman, 10-4. Bottom of the sixth, RBI single Ryan Braun, 10-5. Top of the ninth, home run Raymond Tapia, 11-5. And bottom of the ninth, bases loaded walk Lorenzo Cain, 11-6. And that's your final. John Gray, 5 and 2 thirds innings, 7 hits, 5 runs, 2 walks, 9 strikeouts, 0 4.22. Freddie Peralta, 4 innings, 8 hits, 6 and runs, 0 walks, 3 strikeouts, 0 8.31. Rays over the Royals, 3 to 1. The Rays go to 20 and 11. KC, 11 and 21. The winning pitcher for Tampa Bay, Adam Kolarik. Willie Peralta, the loss, drops to 2 and 2. And Diego Castillo gets his fourth save of the year. Bottom of the third, RBI triple with Merrifield, 1-0 KC. Top of the fifth, RBI single, Golmurdo, Heredia, 1-1. Top of the ninth, the go-ahead home run by Brandon Lowe, 3-1 raise is your final. Charlie Morton, 6-2, and thirds innings, 5 hits and earned run, a walk, 9 strikeouts, 0 2.52. Danny Duffy, 6 innings, 6 hits and earned run, a walk, 6 strikeouts, 0 3.27. Nats over the Cardinals, 2-1. As the Nats get a big win and improve to 13-17. St. Louis drops to 20 and 11. Steven Strasburg, the win, he's 3 and 1. Dakota Hudson, the loss, 2 and 2. Sean Livell gets his fourth save of the save. Top of the third, RBI single, Colton Wong, 1 nothing Cardinals. Bottom of the fourth, infield single, Jan Gomes, run scores on an error, 1 1. And then Brian Dozier grounds into a double play. The run scores, 2 on Nats is your final. Steven Strasburg, 6 and 2 thirds inning, 6 hits and a run, 2 outside strikeouts, or 8 3.45. Dakota Hudson, Six innings, four hits, an earned run, two walks, seven strikeouts, zero four point eight. White Sox over the Red Sox, six to four. This was a fun game. The White Sox go to fourteen and fifteen. Boston drops to fourteen and eighteen. Carson Fulmer gets the win. He's one and one. Ryan Brazier lost, drops to one and one. Top of the first, sacrifice fly. Raphael Devers one out in Sox. Bottom of the first, two run shot. James McCann two one. White Sox top of the third, home run Andrew Benatendi two two. RBI ground out Rafael Devers, 3-2 Sox, bottom of the sixth. RBI single by Jose Rondon puts the White Sox in a 3-3 tie. Top of the seventh, fielder's choice, J.D. Martinez, 4-3. And in the bottom of the ninth, a three-run walk-off homer by Nicky Delmonico gives the White Sox a 6-4 victory. Lucas Giolito, five innings, seven hits, three runs, two walks, seven strikeouts, 0 a 5.32. David Price, 6 innings, 7 hits, 3 runs, 2 walks, 5 strikeouts, ERA, 3.75. And last but not least, Angels over the Blue Jays, 6-2. The Angels improve to 15-17. and 17. Toronto drops to 14-17. and 17. Tyler Skaggs gets the win. He's 3-2. Aaron Sanchez lost 3-2. Bottom of the second, 2-run shot, Cole Calhoun, 2-0 Angels. Bottom of the third, bases loaded walk by... Kevin Smith, 3 nothing Angels, 2-run single, and John Simmons, the second run scores on an error, 5 nothing Angels, top of the 5th, RBI ground out, Teoscar Hernandez, 5-1, top of the 6th, RBI double, Randall Gritchick, made it a 5-2 game, bottom of the 6th, home run Mike Trout, 6-2 Angels is your final, Tyler Skaggs, 6 innings, 4 hits, 2 runs, 3 walks, 5 strikeouts, Ray 3.12, Aaron Sanchez, 4 innings, 9 hits, 4 runs, 2 walks, 2 strikeouts, Ray 3.09, Today's games, at 2.20, you have the Cardinals and the Cubs. That's going to be a huge series. Both these teams playing so well right now. Jack Flaherty against Kyle Hendricks. Flaherty 3-1 with the 4.06. Hendricks 1-4 with the 5.33. 7 o'clock, Twins-Yankees. A big series for the Twins to follow up that impressive Astro series. Kyle Gibson and James Paxson. Gibson 2-0 with the 4.88. Paxson 3-2 with the 3.38. Athletics-Pirates. Brian Anderson and Joe Musgrove. Anderson 3 and 2 with the 4.35. Musgrove 1 and 2 with the 1.54. Rays Orioles. Tyler Glass now and Dan Straley. Glass now 5 and 0 with the 1.75. Straley 1 and 1 with the 6.75. Nationals Phillies. So Bryce Harper against his old team. Jeremy Hellickson against Jared Eikhoff. Hellickson 2 and 0 with the 5.82. Eikhoff 1 and 1 with the 2.12. Royals and the Tigers. Jorge Lopez and Matt Boyd. Lopez 0-2 with the 5.08. Boyd 2-2 two two with the 3.13. Mariners Indians. You say Kikuchi and Shane Bieber. Kikuchi 1-1 one one with the 4.54. Bieber 2-1 with the 3.68. Braves Marlins. Kevin Gossman and Jose Urena. 
Gossman one and two with a four point eight. Urena one and four with a five point oh eight. Giants Reds. Tyler Bede and Sonny Gray Bede making his season debut. Sonny Gray zero and four with a three point six four. Eight o'clock Blue Jays Rangers. Tyler Thornton and Mike Miner Thornton zero and three with a five point oh eight. Miner three and two with a two point eight eight. My bad, Trent Thornton, not Tyler. Red Sox White Sox. Chris Sale and Reynaldo Lopez Sale on five the six point three zero, Lopez two and three with a six point zero three Mets Brewers, Stephen Matz and Brandon Woodruff Matz three and one with a three point six eight Woodruff three and one with a five point one seven, eight forty Diamondbacks Rockies, Robbie Ray and Tyler Anderson Ray one and one with a four point one eight Anderson zero and two with eleven point three four, and ten o'clock the Dodgers and the Padres, so the Dodgers face Machado. Clayton Kershaw against Eric Lauer. Kershaw one though with the two point two five. Lauer two and three with the four point four one. Before I get to my best bet, I'm going to go over who the league chose for the players of the month. We'll start with the actual player of the month, and your winners for April. Are in the American League Cody Bellinger. I'm sorry, the National League Cody Bellinger in the American League Tim Anderson. I disagree with the Anderson choice. I think that you should be on a winning team or help your team win to get this award. With Bellinger is done with the Dodgers, so I think Eddie Rosario got snubbed of the award for a guy that. I think, had a fluky, successful month of April from a batting average standpoint. So, the pitcher of the month. In the National League, Luis Castillo is your winner. In the American League, Tyler Glass now. So, the deserving winners won this award, so that's very good. And now your rookies of the month. In the National League, Peter Alonzo of the New York Mets. He was someone I forgot to mention among the candidates for this award. I thought Chris Paddock was going to win because he was a rookie pitcher that succeeded rather than just give it to the rookie hitter. And the Padres being a surprise in the National League, I think, has a lot to do with why I chose Paddock. And Paddock's been a big part of that. And then the Mets, meanwhile, have been 500. And your American League Rookie of the Month, Brandon Lowe. So the deserving winner there wins it. And now, Reliever of the Month, Shane Green in the American League and Kirby Yates in the National League. Again, the two deserving ones win. And listen, I think Alonzo is very deserving of the award, National League Rookie of the Month, but I would have chosen Chris Paddock. That's just... My opinion, and meanwhile, I explained my reasoning for why I felt Eddie Rosario should have won over Tim Anderson because I think Rosario is an improved player on a what looks to be a surprise contender, leading the way for them in home runs. Meanwhile, Tim Anderson, I think, had a fluky month of April in which he hit at a ridiculous number and he had seven home runs compared to Rosario's 11. And now my best bet of the day brought to you by FanDuel. There are some interesting choices for tonight. We'll start in the NBA, then we'll go to the NHL, then the baseball. We'll go with the Celtics, we'll go with the Blazers. We'll go with the Hurricanes and the Blues. And then in baseball... We'll go with the Rays, the Phillies, the Braves, and we'll go with, I don't feel super about this considering how bad he's been, but we'll go with the Red Sox and Chris Sale. 41.84 odds, wagering a dollar, payout of $42.84. That's it for today. I'll be back on Monday with the regular podcast, recapping all the events from the weekend, 
in a couple hours. I'm going to be doing a podcast with my buddy Jeff Burns to preview and predict the Kentucky Derby. That will be up later. And keep continuing to look out for my MLB prospect podcasts where I go through all the prospects that are in each team's top 30, go over their ETAs and where they are now, how they're drafted, and give the guys that are in the top 100 overall a comparison. So I hope you guys have a great weekend, everybody.